Hey guys, uh, I'm Bree. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, trans identities and how they intersect with like text spaces. No, I think it, it just won't play through the speakers. Yeah. It's... Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm Bree. I'm going to talk a little bit about trans identities and how they intersect with um, being in like text spaces and in progressive and feminist spaces. Um, so, I think most of us, uh, when we think of oppression and marginalization, um, tend to think of it as something that like other people do. Um, in particular, we think of it as something that like particularly like archetypically bad people do. So it's easy to think of like racism as being committed by like the Ku Klux Klan and homophobia as being committed by um, like the Westboro Baptist Church. Um, and I think there's it's sort of interesting that we do that. Um, I think it is sort of based in uh, like being able to other other people like that sort of makes it easy easier to share an identity of like okay I'm against that they are over there I'm over here um, and you know it's it sort of it makes for a good conversation occasionally um, but uh, I think what's harder to do um, and what's maybe a little more ambiguous uh, is to sort of call out. Um, to call out and discuss the like the endless little streams of microaggressions um, that we all all commit, um, you know, sort of daily, um, and that marginalized people just sort of face constantly. Um, and so, uh, I am a queer trans woman who is pretty visibly trans, also, and so most of the um, and otherwise pretty much privileged. Um, so most of most of the stuff that I face has to do with like gender identity. Um, and sexuality stuff. Um, so, for example, like the biggest thing with me is misgendering, right? There's like this constant little little trickle. There's actually um, there's a great little blog post that like compares misgendering to Chinese water torture of just like the like day to day little drip of like these little slight, you know, maybe individually annoyances um, that like over time or with like a few a few particularly awful instances can sort of just like reduce you to a wreck pretty easily. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about those and um, I guess how, how you can recognize them, how you can call them out. Um, so first I want to talk a little bit about um, my transition just so you guys I think have a feel where I'm coming from. Uh, it feels really weird and vain and narcissistic still a little bit to talk about my transition uh, as part of this talk, um, but I think it's really important to, um, I don't know, to, to get an idea for where I'm coming from, uh, maybe to like have some kind of connection with a trans person if you don't, um, sort of get an idea of how that narrative is not the pop culture one necessarily. Um, and also because uh, this week is my one year mark for HRT, so I'm kind of doing it for myself, so you know, no big deal. <laughs> Oh no, please, please don't. No, it's <laughs> um, cool. So I'll try to keep this brief. Uh, I don't want to give like my entire life story here, um, but in brief, uh, so at like 23 in, in 2013, um, I had been feeling like these vague, uneasy gender feels for like a decade or so that were sort of hard to define, um, and sort of over the course of, I don't know six months, a year, um, very gradually came to, uh, like, the understanding of my identity as a woman. Um, and again, it was very gradual, and that it was very necessary for that to be gradual. It was sort of like, well, I'm a guy who likes to cross-dress, I'm a genderqueer person, I'm uh, a trans girl, but I really don't feel like identifying myself as a woman publicly, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so... Uh, Transitioning in that gradual process was actually fairly easy. The hard part was actually uh, coming out to people because for those that period of time, it was like, I don't know what to come out as. Um, like, you know, once it's like, okay, I'm a lady, like, that's pretty easy to explain to people. But if you're coming out as like, I'm a genderqueer person who like identifies somewhere in the middle of a spectrum and it's like, most people don't, don't even have that maybe baseline um, as to, to like what you are trying to tell them. Um, 
But so at work, eventually I sent uh, this email out. It's long-ish. I don't read it out loud, but it's just like, hey, just so you guys know, uh, I prefer the name Gree and female pronouns. Um, and yeah, if you look at the bottom, I made a really dumb naming stuff and cash invalidation joke. Um, so that's cool. <laughs> um, yeah, and so uh, part of the reason I put that there is because, um, and I will, obviously this will be posted up later, but um, I put that there because a lot of, like when I was looking for a model for how to do that, like how to send that email out, I had nothing to go on. Um, I would really like if more people had some kind of, some kind of format for what to go on. Um, yeah, uh, there were like a couple of things, but it's just, it was very difficult for me to find something. Um, so it was, a, it was actually a pretty smooth transition, all things <coughs> considered. Like I had very supportive coworkers, partners, my family was great. Um, but even like a smooth transition um, is one that's pretty peppered with awful, awful crap. Um, and so there's one instance that like I think kind of sticks out the most, um, which happened like, I don't know, four or five months into transition. Um, I was at a bar here in like East Atlanta um, and we're standing outside and two guys come up, like who've been passed by. Um, one comes back and says, oh, hey, guy, uh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, me and my friend were talking. We were wondering, you're actually a guy, right? Um, and like, I was just like, I didn't even know how to respond to that. I think I just said fuck off really loudly and like sort of pushed him um, and didn't really know what else to do. So um, I was like, okay, this, this was a gay bar. I went around back. I was like, that's some rando. I will hopefully be a little safer around the back of the gay bar where like the, pat the actual patrons are. Um, so then within like the next 20 minutes or so, two more guys come up and start hitting on me, but then say like, oh, hang on, wait a minute. Um, I'm gay, so I wanna, I wanna make sure you're really a guy, right? Like, like three times in a row this question. Um, so, you know, by that point, I'm getting pretty visibly upset. Someone asks me what's going on. I tell them what. Uh, I tell them that people keep asking me, like, I'm actually a guy, right? And the, <laughs> the person I tell this to is like, well, you are, right? Um, <laughs> so uh, I uh, ended that night at Waffle House, uh, <laughs> which is a pretty good way to deal with that, if you're wondering. Um, <laughs> so um, that, that incident sort of started me thinking, like, why do people think it is okay to say these things? Why do people think that these weird little microaggressions are like totally fine to just come out of their mouth and not really really consider um, the effect that has on people? Um, and so I sort of ended up compiling like a list of like, here's all these shitty things that have happened to me and other people I know. So that, that's really fun, by the way. Uh, <laughs> set aside some me time after that if you're going to do that um, for yourself. Um, but yeah, I, I sort of uh, ended up putting it into a nice big rule of three pile. Um, and so, you know, until recently, the, the biggest um, the biggest piece of it is just sort of ignorance. Like, so many people don't know the language, don't know uh, pretty much anything about trans identities. Um, and so that, that just leads to lots of weird stuff, like just implicitly misgendering people because you don't know that trans people can't exist and that men can look a certain way, women can look a certain way that is not the way that you're used to. So, you know, there's sort of the like, uh, excuse me, you're in the wrong bathroom sort of situation um, and just lots of stuff like that. The biggest example um, is, have you had the surgery? Uh, don't ask this to someone if you don't know that already um, because what this is what, what you're ask, actually asking is, hey, what's your junk look like? I really want to know. Um, don't do that to like anyone. <laughs> um, so thankfully this is getting a lot better there's been a lot more like pop culture um, awareness of trans people through like Liver and Cox and Janet Mock and Laura Jane Grace and all of these people um, and that's been great so it's reducing this a little bit and you know the, the answer for yourself if you feel like you are doing this kind of thing is to read up on trans issues and like I don't know, read a book read Redefining Realness um, it's great uh, and I, yeah, just just read things by trans authors, things like that, and I don't know, um, sort of get an idea of, of where they're coming from. Um, so that pop culture thing, though, has a flip side, which is uh, a lot of people tend to start looking at trans people through like cliches, um, 
And the big one here, right, is like the tragic training, which is like, you're so brave. Um, don't tell people that either. That's also weird. <laughs> like, I might be if I hear that again. Um, it's weird to tell someone that they are brave for having the identity that they have. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, the uh, I think the way to get to get past or through this one or whatever um, is just sort of to lift the voices of trans people. So again, like, um, there's a lot of a lot of things there where like people will people will come to the friend of a trans person because the cliche is that it is very shameful and um, anxiety-inducing for a trans person to be trans in public. So like, they'll go up to a friend, or a lot of times people will go up to my partner. And so I never got the, um, has she had surgery yet question, but I did get, uh, has she had surgery, said to my partner a lot, <laughs> and then told afterward, and it's like, what? why is it more okay if you tell them? Um, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, so just listening to the voices of trans people, being like, hey, talk to this person, or, you know, um, recommend these sources, uh, these books and whatnot by, by trans people um, rather than speaking for them so that you can sort of kill those cliches. Um, so the, the big one that I need to talk after is uh, sort of just the, the fundamental denial of, um, you know, in the case of trans women, their identity as women, trans men as men, uh, non-binary people as non-binary. Um, just sort of the, the like absolute failure to recognize um, our existence as uh, the identity that we say we are. Um, and so, I made a nice table. Um, so here's sort of uh, here's sort of how that plays out in language. There's always uh, you know cis, cis folks get a default and trans folks get a modifier. Um, so a lot of a lot of language until recently was like you know you would say uh, what are your preferred pronouns to someone who is like maybe his elite trans or something. But you don't say preferred pronouns to anyone else. You just say, what are your pronouns? Um, you know, you so people identify as something, trans folks self-identify. So there's a lot of stuff that's like, hey, uh, you know, self-identify women, welcome, that sort of thing. That's sort of odd because it's, uh, it's, it's not a modifier that you would use in other cases. It's just like, women, welcome. Um, so it's odd to say self-identify to, I don't know, to just mean if you are a woman, uh, come to the space, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I so I, I built that big table, um, and I'm, I'm sort of trying to get this point of large numbers of, of tiny, uh, tiny events affecting us. Um, I guess to make it clear that like, there's a lot of work. It is like a staggering, staggering amount of work that needs to be done. Um, to improve this situation, uh, and it is large enough that like it needs to be uh, undertaken by like every single person actively, um, and not just like I'm aware that this is a problem, but in like calling these things out, in um, I guess having the uncomfortable conversations with your friends that like, hey, the thing you said was awful. Here's why, um, and. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't really have any tips for actually doing the calling out, uh, but I would appreciate if if anyone wanted to comment with them. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you.